so this could be the start of a new series on the channel where i answer all of the questions that you guys ask what's going on guys cheers now the other day i posted on the community page here on youtube that i was considering doing a question and answer video and overwhelmingly you guys were excited about that idea over 500 of you guys said yes do it so a bunch of you guys dropped questions down below a lot of you guys also asked questions in my discord if you're not a part of that discord there will be a link in the description below and your boy made a slideshow so i'm gonna go through a bunch of questions here i have almost i think two dozen questions we're gonna start with a bunch of rise of kingdoms questions and then later in the video we're gonna talk more about questions that people just asked me about myself and then at the very end of the video i'm gonna ask you guys a question so make sure you stay tuned for that quick reminder I am close to 30,000 subscribers, which is actually insane. So if you guys aren't subbed or if you, even if you think you are, just go down there and check real quick. It would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. And without further ado, let's jump right into the Q and a. So question number one comes from a user who actually goes by the name of E song. Ye, and he said, would you say that investing in YSG is a waste these days? There are more and more people saying that it's better to save gold heads for Alex and season of conquest commanders rather than use them on Esong Ye. Now this is a perfectly good question. Esong is literally one of the oldest commanders in the game and it's been forever and everyone still says you should invest in Esong. But lately a lot of people have been questioning that uh, golden rule. Should we say, I mean, realistically Esong, you know, he gives you a chance to get an attack bonus, but he doesn't really give you any stats besides that. And the only thing that he's really great at is dealing massive amounts of AOB skill damage with a 50% skill damage bonus for himself and whoever he's paired with but he's generally pretty uh glass cannon right you know usually Esong has to be paired with somebody tanky otherwise it's a march that could get swarmed down i can see why people might be concerned about this ultimately i think Esong is still the best circular aoe commander we have in the game it's just so much damage factor and the benefit about him being such an old commander is that you get access to him very early he's like still one of the meta commanders and you can start investing in him very very early on are you gonna have a great primary for him in the early game not really but especially if you're a free-to-play player the circular aoe is really gonna help you with changing Chaining barbarians now chaining barbarians isn't as good as it used to be it seems like every few patches they nerf it slightly which is very frustrating but at the end of the day Esong is still a very very good commander you can still use him with Ramses and Nebu and he's still incredible in the late game so ultimately I would say you know if you're a brand new player still invest in Esong you will get use out of that AoE it's very valuable in the open fields and now that he has his own relic he does get some more stats and skill damage so I think that there's still a really good argument to be made about players using Esong the next question comes from founding fathers films they said if I'm infantry focused and am not investing in YSG who else would you recommend honestly I am mostly infantry focused and for the longest time I still used Esong A it wasn't till my latest KVK that I got Nebu to pair with him and honestly 5515 is a good investment for a super powerful combo with an expertise Esong if you're not going to expertise Esong and you're not going to use him uh you still want to invest in commanders that have lots of skill damage in the open field so you definitely want to go with somebody like Guan Yu you may want to consider Harold as well he can you know when he's swarmed he does have circular AoE uh you want to maybe pair him with somebody like Charles or Pakal or Trajan those commanders will give him the uh the sort of the tankiness that he needs to survive those those big swarms and of course you know we do have the uh the relic for Charles Martel as well which makes him a little bit better now which is good in the season of conquest of course Alexander is uh sort of a no-brainer like you definitely want to invest in Alexander if you're an infantry main it just makes sense the next question comes from somebody that I'm gonna call Cody because I don't know what that whole long thing is but they asked people say change Civ when it's mid game which is season two and three but how do I know when it's that time and what Civ should I switch to I'm China right now I've sort of always said that if you're a free-to-play player or maybe even a low spender you should probably pick Germany for the 10 percent action point recovery and you also get that five percent troop training speed which is really nice this is a great civilization to pick when you should change your Civ is really Really up to you you should uh you know this is a micro optimization right like it's not there's not a huge difference here we're talking about you know a very small amount of stats so it's not the end of the world if you don't have the optimal civilization you can change it whatever you whenever you want and you can change it later as well with you know alliance credit so I wouldn't stress about your sieve too much um honestly I'm not a huge fan of 
of China, but you do have that action point recovery and building speed, which is nice for the early game. I would recommend changing civilizations when you think you're going to start to switch to a more of an active fighter role. That's usually when I would suggest it. Um, in the early game, you really want to focus on getting your city hall to 25, getting to T5 units. That's when you can start to be a bit more effective. Obviously, you can still fight when you're T4 if you have some good commanders, but it's up to you, you know, when you feel like your civ will help you by changing it. That's when you should do it. If you feel like you're being held back by something about your sieve that you don't like red hair asks how should i be managing my speed ups as a free to play player as somebody who also hoards a lot of speed ups uh i would honestly say that the best time to spend these is during an event that you think you can win that involves training troops or gaining power right if you are in mightiest governor and you're able to gain a ton of power in that time maybe pushing for t5 uh research that would be a great time to use your speed ups or again pushing for a, a large amount amount of troops during a mightiest governor or maybe if you're in like a, a weaker kingdom or a weaker continent perhaps you could even push for like a zenith of power skin which would be a really good investment if it gives you stats that are helpful for your account obviously i really love my uh, atlantis skin here 10 percent infantry health is incredible but really saving these speed ups for the best value for your account and making the most progress is the way that i would go the next question from burning sun is is it okay to upgrade my city hall as fast as possible and is it okay to use up my action point recovery to farm lots of barbarians for Lohar's event? So as far as the city hall goes, yes, it is important to bring your city hall to level 25 as fast as possible. That is the number one thing you should be focusing on in the early game. I know in other games, like I think clash of clans and stuff like that, you sort of want to level things up uh on the same sort of scale that doesn't apply to rise of kingdoms now there are buildings that you that are prerequisites to getting to your city hall to 25 so you'll have to for example get your wall to 24 was it 24 first before you can continue you know with those upgrades so that's something to keep in mind you can't just upgrade your city hall um but you know if you don't have to upgrade it then i wouldn't i would focus just on the city hall itself and when it comes to using your action point recovery potions or items whatever you want to call that uh, i would recommend saving these for the marauders which is the pre kbk event uh you can get a ton of really good rewards from that um however lohar's trial is a pretty good uh time to use them in the early game if you decide Especially if you haven't maxed Lohar, uh, Lohar is going to be really important for getting your commanders to level 60. So making sure that you can max Lohar is, is good. Uh, but in the sort of mid to late game, you pretty much want to save all of these for pre KVK and also KVK barbarians are going to give you a lot of rewards as well. So keep that in mind. Those are two excellent times to use these besides Lohar's trial. Wolf life asked me, what was your first fault in rise of kingdoms? Uh, so I expertise Cao Cao back when I was a free to play slash low spender, because I thought that I would never be a big enough whale to get a ton of legendary sculptures later down the line I started spending money and that's sort of how uh how that addiction started but you can see now that I have 551 extra Tao Tao sculptures which it's just a waste it's just a massive waste uh I used a bunch of universals on him which was a huge fault and honestly besides that I would say spending money like maxing out Minamoto like I, I just spending money in a mobile game like this that's always the first mistake because then you're hooked then then they got you they got you uh luckily for me it turned out that I was able to you know focus this YouTube channel on it and it's sort of uh you know returned some of the money that I've spent so I'm okay with it but otherwise I would say man spending money uh was definitely a mistake the next question comes from shadow spy they said would you like to see siege warfare commanders yes I have mentioned this before on the channel I've also in my uh sort of commander wishlist video or in the videos where I talk about commanders I want to see in rise of kingdoms one of them I did mention that there should be uh, a a siege focused commander uh and if you guys didn't check that video out go ahead and check it out but I think there there should be another use for siege right siege uh, weapons are a really really good uh historically they've been really effective at taking down castles and then in this game all we ever use them for is like gathering food like that's very stupid it makes no sense uh in, in history they were just epic like terrifying weapons and uh I feel like they should reflect that in the game there's really no use for them otherwise so I would yes I would like to see at least one or two uh maybe a pair of siege commanders that would be really cool fire nut nine said will Lilith ever be nice enough to give content creators create a code so if you guys don't know what create a code is this is a system that uh, a lot of games use but I think primarily Fortnite was the one that popularized this where 
if you are, are a content creator and you, you you can get a code from Fortnite, and then if anybody makes purchases in the game with that content creators code they get sort of like a, a kickback sort of like an affiliate link right uh and honestly i don't think lilith will ever do that because lilith is extremely greedy and there's no reason for them to do it um people are going to spend money in this game regardless of if they watch youtube videos now there is an argument to be made that you know players who watch my content or watch chiskel's content or wix content or or you know anything like that um perhaps watching these videos you know encourages people to spend money and honestly you know that would be nice for them to give give some of that money back to us um but unfortunately uh i just don't see them ever doing something like this it just it doesn't really fit their business model whereas something like fortnite it's all cosmetic so there's no reason for someone to spend money whereas in this game people will just spend for progress right so th that uh, incentive to spend is already sort of built into how the game works panda knight asked when will lilith give you a sponsorship they also asked do you think there will be a chance for you to be a sponsored content creator and then they finally asked which of these content creators will you want to collab with they mentioned shinchi fleisch gecko roni or chiskel so i do not think lilith will ever sponsor me maybe they will one day uh but i honestly doubt it i feel like i'm already making videos for the game so why would they pay me to make videos for the game if i'm already making videos for it also i'm very critical of them i'm very honest with how i feel about the direction of the game and they don't like that honestly like i, I mean it, it is what it is right like if i'm talking poorly about their game they're not gonna like that okay even if it's the truth even if it would benefit them to hear the truth it doesn't matter they don't care that uh that you know that it's the truth that they're just not going to pay me for it so it is what it is uh maybe one day who knows i love rise of kingdoms and i want what's best for the game which is why i'm so critical about it um but honestly i just i just don't think that they like me um as far as those content creators i would love to collab with pretty much anybody as long as we have a good idea um obviously you know if i make like a waifu tier list i feel like you know fleisch might not be that interested in that right like so it really comes down to what's a good idea for a video um i think the the creators that i think i would have the most easy time making content with would be like shinchi and chiskel um i've already sort of collabed with chiskel a little bit a while ago i sent him a video of my city getting rallied and he sort of reviewed it on his channel um so you can check that out if you want and then uh shinchi i think i made him i think i, I collabed with shinchi once where i gave him like a, a rise of kingdoms quiz or something like that it was a very long time ago i don't remember but yeah i would be open to collabing with anybody as long as we have a, a good content idea also they didn't mention it here but more collabs with um with wick gaming definitely would be cool we're obviously he and i are, co are collabing a lot with the uh infinity kingdom event uh the revival of cities so that's been really awesome but i think uh wick is just a really cool guy and he's a very good content creator so working with him more in the future is definitely something that i would be down to do even though it wasn't mentioned here this question comes from humo this is funny they said if lilith decided to make rok a more non-well game and listen to the players do you think rok will be better than infinity kingdom which I, I thought that was funny i mean which game is better comes down to your personal preference right some players prefer infinity kingdom some players prefer rise of kingdoms because it has the open field mobility which game is better is up to you uh if you guys haven't tried infinity kingdom go ahead and try it it's a, it's a good game you've seen it a ton on the channel here um honestly every game in this genre every game in the rise of kingdoms genre the slg genre the mobile mmo genre the city builder genre whatever you want to call it every game in this in this uh genre has heavy monetization uh strategies and tactics and incentives right that's just it's just the reality no matter which one it is um they do really want you to spend i think rise of kingdoms is getting to be uh one of the worst um offenders of this they didn't used to be that way bef like before the latest equipment change and all that stuff but you know lately it feels like every update has new bundles and new systems that encourage you to spend and it's just getting really bad i know that you know when rok first came out it was very possible for free-to-play players to compete with the whales not fully but you know to an extent uh, but now it just feels literally impossible i don't know it is what it is but um better than infinity kingdom is very uh, a subjective question a me dead is that uh is that did i say that right i'm sorry they asked how did you find rise of kingdoms and what was your reaction playing and what was the one big thing you never knew about the game so i think i've told this on my streams before but i found rise of kingdoms because like 40 people at my job started playing it like one person started playing it and then another started playing it and then they encouraged other people to play it and then everyone at my job 
job like was in an alliance and i was like well, what's this game that everyone's playing this was like a month after the game came out uh, so i downloaded it they invited me to their alliance and we were in uh we were in an alliance called rise of excellence rox <laughs> um and you know we were in kingdom 1062 and we were just playing the game like you know as co-workers and it was cool because then like we would go home from work and we would all be talking in like group chats chats and stuff like that um and my initial reaction to the game was that it was a unique uh ch change of pace for the city builder genre like we had already had a game of war fire age and things like that um and those games never appealed to me because the graphics were horrible they were in a uh, portrait mode and they just felt old and like just not they didn't pull me in right but rise of kingdoms had better graphics it was landscape mode it had a uh, better troop movement when the game first came out it didn't have free movement but it had better troop movement which i thought was really cool uh and it was based on historical figures which i thought was awesome because i knew some of the commanders that were in the game like sun tzu and julius caesar and things like that so um, i thought that was cool plus the ability to have a community in a server i thought was awesome like i can actually play in real time from my phone uh in this strategy game so those are the things that like i first noticed that i really loved about the game and at that time i was really into clash royale like to where i had spent a few hundred dollars on clash royale getting to like the top of the ladder um and then slowly i started stopping clash royale and playing rise of kingdoms every day and i haven't really looked back since but yeah i i basically heard about it uh, as word of mouth from my coworkers once they stopped playing um, I sort of had already made some friends in the game and RK is one of them. Shout out to combat Panda, shout out to Boshi. You know, you guys, I I've, uh, I've made some cool friends from the game and uh, I still play with, with RK and, and Panda and these guys, um, to this day, we've migrated to different servers and stuff like that. Uh, so even though my coworkers stopped playing, um, for the most part, I, I continued on <laughs> the shining rod said, where did the name Omniarch come from? Now, this is a little bit of a meme. Okay. This is a little bit of a meme. I've mentioned this on my streams before. So i thought of the term omniarch a long time ago if you guys go back in my videos this youtube channel is very old i mo i mainly posted call of duty content for like the first like four or five years of this channel okay um so i came up with the name because i wanted something a little bit original i took the prefix omni and the prefix arc and i just combined them together so if you think about like omnipresence omnipotence it sort of implies like it's everywhere right and arc is like the 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 top of a of a hierarchy like a like an archbishop or something like that right so basically it means that i'm like the greatest around and that is the worst the cringiest the, the dumbest thing that that ever that i've ever thought of right um and that's why it's like sort of a meme on uh when i meant when i tell this story on stream everybody's like oh my god like i'm gonna vomit that's horrible but yeah that's kind of how i came up with it um i thought it sounded kind of cool um looking back i think omni arc is too long of a name a lot of people mispronounce it a lot of people don't know how to say it um and earlier i had it was x omni arc and i took the x out but anyway that's kind of where it comes from and uh it's it's pretty cringy i know <laughs> noah asked is it easy to be a content creator how long do you work on videos i don't believe you're full time uh so when when are you going to make that jump to a full-time content creator so um is it easy no it's not easy um it's it's easier it's easy in some ways right because when you consider it work which uh, at this point it has gone from a hobby to a job like like he says I have um we'll talk about that in a second but um it's not easy not for what you think like uh to edit videos is not that not that hard um and to film videos isn't that hard I feel like I've learned how to talk to a camera and all that stuff um the hard part is coming up with good ideas and good titles and thumbnails to get people to watch the videos right um if people don't click on it then it doesn't really matter so coming up with new and unique ideas or taking other ideas that other creators have done and then making it your own and making it interesting or adapting it to rise of kingdoms that's the hard part right because if I just post the same like re recycled like kusanoki guide 2022 like I, I don't know it's like how can i make that interesting right that's the hard part is is making it interesting and something that people want to actually watch um each video depends sometimes i can do like a patch update video will take like two hours start to finish like i'll record it edit it make the thumbnail do the title and, and like i'm done that's easy right um but those videos tend to do worse right so sometimes if i have a, a video that i think will do better i'll spend more time on it sometimes they take five six hours um it really depends on how long the video is and, and what it what it is making the switch to full time is a really risky one for me my channel is not that big and it's focused on a mobile game that i think is not 
uh it's it's in its it's in its later stages of life right rise of kingdoms is not a new game so i don't know what the future holds for rise of kingdoms i think the game will be around for a while but will there be a, a large audience for content in the future i don't know i hope so um but it is what it is so right now i have gone from working at my job full-time to part-time um and you know that's the i made that uh decision because I was starting to make about the same amounts of money doing both so i decided that i might as well spend more time on the content here or at least have more free time which because before i was just like going crazy doing everything so um that's why i decided to go part-time at my job and part-time making content going full-time i would have to be making significantly more because i uh it doesn't feel that stable right it's like it's kind of scary to do that also i have health insurance and stocks in the company i work for so there's still benefits to having like a regular job but the fact that i can work there part-time um is really awesome so i kind of get like the best of both worlds right now which is very perfect okay lloyd sent me a ton of questions over on discord so i'm gonna go through all these how are you and how is life in new york city is it expensive uh i'm okay i hate the weather in new york so it gets dark early it's cold it's snowy and that always brings my mood down a bit right they always talk about seasonal affective disorder whatever it's called uh that's totally real especially in new york um it is very expensive that is one of the biggest downsides of new york city um i could I could have a, a mortgage on a home for less than I pay for just this room <laughs> in my apartment in Queens. So yes. Um, where do you go shopping? I don't really know what that means. If you mean like grocery stores and stuff, usually we use like Instacart or something to order groceries. Me and my roommate, um, we use, uh, I, we go to like Wegmans and, and Target and things like that. Now uh, brands you like for clothing. I'm not like a big clothing guy. A lot of my clothes come from like Hollister, Abercrombie. Those are mainly just like cardigans and, and like jeans. Um, a lot of times you'll see, I wear just like a plain black or a plain white Hanes t-shirt. That's like pretty much my, my style. A lot of my, um, other colored t-shirts come from like banana Republic and things like that. Besides that, I usually just will wear like a hoodie that I like and those vary depending on where I get them from so yeah I don't know I'm not like really big into clothes right now um iOS versus Android I would say iOS a hundred percent a hundred percent a thousand percent um Android has more customization but iOS is just way easier to use uh, just like it just objectively I think it's just far easier and it's like built into the cloud right so I have my MacBook I have an iPad I have airpods like all those just work seamlessly together which i think is awesome also i feel like the uh like ipads are the best mobile gaming devices they just are the ipad pros are just the if you're wondering what the best device to play rise of kingdoms on is it's an ipad pro actually it's actually the best for sure hands down maybe besides the pc version at this point of are okay what are fun activities in new york city um the best part about new york city is the food like there's every type of food you could imagine there's a ton of museums that i love there's a ton of from coffee shops i love drinking coffee so i'm like i'm all if you ever follow me on instagram which shameless plug you should do that but if you watch my story you'll see i'm always posting like food and coffee and all that stuff um and also concerts a lot of good concerts come to new york city i love that i'm a big edm fan so i'm often uh, going to uh to like nightclubs and stuff like that when i can obviously with covid and stuff uh pepsi versus coke i would say coke zero if you guys have been following the channel for a while you know before i started drinking like gamer subs and water and coffee and all this other stuff i would pretty much crack open a cold uh coke zero every single video at the beginning uh, or a caffeine free coke if it was later in the day um pepsi is really good i honestly don't care but if i have to pick it's coke uh dunkin donuts versus krispy kreme this is going to be controversial i prefer dunkin donuts i know i know I, I don't know why i'm not a huge fan of their coffee but i love their donuts and that's what i think of when i think of this question uh, and finally starbucks versus costa cafe i've never had costa cafe um i think i've seen P i think this is in like eu right i think this is in like uh england or something like that um but i i drink starbucks probably every day every other day um i i love it i love the vanilla sweet cream cold brews the americanos oh my god so two people asked me this question jojo and dtpx 
uh how does it feel to live in one of the most expensive cities and also i guess lloyd kind of asked me that uh here as well uh it definitely is expensive and i really do hate that um the food is expensive the rent is expensive like everything is more expensive here in new york um it it's pro probably is one of the most expensive if not the expensive cities in the world um and honestly it's it's not really that worth it like in terms of like the infrastructure of the city and like the congestion of traffic and like just the pollution like it's it's i don't know why it's so expensive other than just like this is where things happen um like the city itself is kind of a dump on it like if i'm being realistic like unless you're in like the nice parts of manhattan like soho and things like that um the city itself is kind of grimy kind of gross especially in the winter so yeah that definitely sucks that it's so expensive but you know there's great food there's tons to do here and there's tons of people here so uh it is what it is I don't know if I'll be I don't know how much longer I'm gonna live in New York City not forever that's for sure but uh for now I do like it even if it is expensive we have Alex here who's asking what's your favorite and least favorite parts of living in New York City I guess I kind of just answered that um food coffee things to do tons of people uh and the least favorite part is that it's uh, dirty and expensive <laughs> now we're gonna end this with a question for you guys would you all like to see me live stream again I know I start streaming and then I stop streaming my schedule is never consistent um, but I am getting a more consistent work schedule like my part-time work schedule outside of content creation so I could potentially build a uh, a streaming schedule officially um, but that's only if you guys want me to do it uh, and if so what games would you like me to see uh, like to see me play besides rise of kingdoms this is a question for you guys to actually answer in the comment section below I'll probably start every stream with some rise of kingdoms and just like kind of talking to you guys and then transition into a different game uh whether it's like league of legends world of warcraft what or I could just do whatever the game of the week is like whatever that hot game is you know like we could do like fall guys or or like uh halo or or among us or whatever people are playing that week right we could we could do something like variety like that um it's up to you guys I'm just curious to know what games you guys are playing and what games you like watching on YouTube or Twitch or whatever the case is so please let me know in the comments section below also let me know if you want me to do more videos like this one where I just answer a bunch of random questions uh I would love to do videos like this normally this is something that would just happen in a live stream right like like I'll just be sitting there answering questions from chat but if I'm not live this would be a good series to do so again let me know in the comments section below and while you're down there make sure you're subscribed we're so close to 30,000. uh drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into youtube algorithm and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace